Hey folks, this is Chris again, and I'm here to simplify your travel materials if you choose to do pen and ink and watercolor. And like I said, I'm not a professional watercolorist. Uh, I have friends that are some of the best in the world. I've taken a couple classes with them. That doesn't qualify me. But what does qualify me is I know what I do in Italy when I sit down and everyone's eating breakfast and I want to do a little watercolor sketch. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. And I know what's very comfortable for me as a non-professional. So I'm talking to you as a professional artist who's at best mediocre in watercolor, but loves to do it. And I do it on every vacation and so does my wife. So let me simplify this table of stuff I have and, and, and just separate it right now. The green and pink pads are from a company called Arches. Okay, they make the world's finest watercolor paper. Well, why do I need it? My stuff's not any good. Yes, but you see, the better the paper, the better you're gonna do. The more you can erase, the more you can lift off, the more you can kind of go over it and layer it and layer it. When you're taking a student grade watercolor paper, I don't care if you're the best artist in the world, and this is, I don't care if you're Dylan Scott Pierce, you're gonna have a tough time with this paper. This is for kids eight and younger, and you're not spending money on them destroying a piece of paper because their motor skills just aren't there yet. So you don't waste the money. So this stuff is like not even on the program here. Now Strathmore makes a great paper. My wife likes this because she likes little postcard sizes. So this is something that she will take all the time. She's a huge fan of pen and ink. In fact, she does the drawing in pen and ink and then splashes a little color in it. So these little Strathmore watercolor postcards are fantastic. The the watercolor pad here, uh, the cold press is is just wonderful. It is a uh, fluid watercolor paper. It's a company I'm reading the back by Speedball. This is a student grade, very inexpensive quality. Wouldn't cost you much if you're just experimenting. I wouldn't go lower in quality than this, okay? These travel pads are spectacular. They're wonderful. What you want with a travel pad when you're looking at these journals, because there's hundreds of places that sell journals, the journals must be a certain weight if possible. You really want it to be 90 to 140 pound weight. The thickness of it, this is 300 pounds. It's, it's basically three times thicker. I made that up, but to give an analogy of it, it's like a cardboard, it's so hard, but it lets me go over it a hundred times. And trust me, I did. People who are good at watercolor, they might do it in five minutes. I need a hundred. I need something that works. My needs are different than theirs. I'm going to make a mistake. They're not. So, but these papers are outstanding. It's acid free. It's uh, it, it takes watercolor. It doesn't take a lot of watercolor. So it's a little splash of a color. It's mostly pen and ink, a uh, wonderful product. So let's talk to the real product here. Okay. So what's the difference in pads? When the pad opens up like this, it's a loose pad. Oh, my wife's drawings are in here. So it's a loose pad. I can see things she started drawing, had in watercolor. Oh, that's in Venice. We were sitting with Dylan and everyone uh, on the way to the academia. I know exactly where that is. Um, I see all these spots. That's a the church across from in Venice. I, it's so weird. I know where our lunch is. I had pasta. I had ravioli. It's really cool. So when it when it's like that, what happens with the pad is it'll warp when you get it wet. So a block pad has black around it and it's like a tar. And then what happens is you take a credit card or something and you just put it along the outside and you lift it off. So when you're finished, you could do a couple watercolors on this and then slide it off and get to the next one. Because it's a block, it won't warp. So these are fantastic. This is the biggest size I would go. I would find something smaller. My wife likes these odd shapes and she could do two on a page or just a long rectangle. This is her purchase, I know it is. So what's the difference in color? So the hot press is the pink and the cold press is the green, and then there's also a rough. So what's the difference? When you take cotton and you put it in the water with a metal screen underneath, and you lift up the screen, now all that cotton's sitting on top. When they take that cotton and it's floating in the water, I'm sorry, it's now on the screen, they put it on the table. If they 
press it with weight, but no heat, it's called cold press. If I'm ironing and there's heat, it's called hot press. So hot press excels at when you're using pen and ink. Whenever you're gonna do fine lines and drawing lines with the ink, you really wanna be pen and ink. You want it to be a smoother, hot press paper. So you have to ask yourself, am I doing hot press or cold press? And if it's hot press, then you really wanna to lean toward, I mean, if you're doing pen and ink, you wanna to lean toward hot press as a material. Um, this was washed in, but they didn't have time to do the ink yet. Then the inks would be the accents to tell you where to go. And you can see the pen and ink in this. This is in between a hot and a cold press. My guess is a Strathmore paper. So that's that. Now, on our last trip to Italy, there was an architect. Now it's, it's shameful here. You know, I take anywhere from 40 to 80 people to Lake Como and Venice, and we all do our own thing. We have meat each day and then do what you want the rest of the day. So it's really your own vacation with some art and photography in the morning and different things. And here I have all these artists, some of the top people in the country, and we're, you know, we do our stuff in the morning and late, but I noticed a friend, someone in the class, whose husband, who's an architect. And every day, all I saw him doing is sitting down at lunch, doing these pen and ink watercolors that were beautiful. And he must have done 10 a day. We did one or two, and we're the ones who want to be the artist. And here's someone who's just doing it fun, doing 10 a day. Well, the sketch pad he used was this one. It's this leather bound thing, and we'll get you the link to it. And uh, I think we got it at Amazon, and it is a, man-made or uh, uh, it is a um, cotton mold paper and it is uh, his drawings were just beautiful his watercolors were exquisite and uh, this travels around now this is kind of big to carry to be honest i'm not putting this i'm not carrying this around in my bag or something which i need to carry back but i'm not carrying this so i still like my little sketch paper but if we were to go to the beach where we were driving somewhere and i could load it in the back of the car and just leave it then all well, by all means i mean i bought two or three of these i loved what he did i loved playing with it um but it has a need so if you're interested in needing help finding some of these watercolor products, then we'll have a link. We'll have the links below in the show notes. And if you're interested in really the essence of what art's about, art's about you telling a story. And to tell a story, sometimes you have to slow down. And when you slow down, you have to breathe and you have to ask yourself, what am I experiencing today as I'm sitting outside at Bellagio or maybe at my house? And I'm just in the backyard and I'm just looking at it and I'm watching the squirrels and the birds and the deer. And I'm just sitting there and I'm saying, what's going on? What am I experiencing? And what would I bring attention to? You see, that's where you put your color. That's where you put the pen. So the pen and ink is a way for you to learn to slow down and experience art, your art. And we get into that heavily at artsecretsstudio.com.